Mina, Tom Don Juan, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. First off, before this Bible message, uh, like all the other times, I have to apologize for not getting things up in a regular fashion, but today I need to apologize a little bit more because it was weird, like, Saturday I lost internet, so I was like, okay, I'll just, you know, I'll just let everyone know on my little internet thing that, hey, internet's not working. And then, <clears throat> I, I think I may have mentioned, no, I didn't mention it in the video because I made the video Saturday night, and I wasn't able to upload the video till Sunday because my internet not only worked, even on my cell phone, internet was not working. I don't know why my wireless provider was not working on top of my internet not working at home. I have no idea what happened there. And then Sunday, no, Sunday, the internet was fixed. It was fixed. I could have put out videos if I had pushed myself and if I had really forced myself. I didn't really push and force myself. Instead, I just played an old game. Had a blast, by the way. I'm glad you wanted to know. So, I should have put out this video <laughs> yesterday. And it's not really a laughing matter, but it's just like, it's so bad, and I've done it so many times, I can only laugh at my own failure at this point. There's not much else I can do. So hopefully, again, you guys will forgive me for not putting this up, and hopefully you will enjoy this in a timely fashion. Those of you who do watch these messages, I know it's not very many, but every single one of you is absolutely worth it. And to anyone who's watching this in the future, you have no idea what I'm talking about because you don't have the, the context of the timing of this video. I, really, you can just ignore the first minute and 40 seconds of this video. But for anyone who does watch it in the, in the right now, in the here and now, I wanted to say that's what happened. I do apologize. It was I could have put the game down. The internet was working Sunday. This could have happened. I should have made it happen, and it didn't. So I will now move on to heaven, chapter or part five. This will definitely be the last part of this series because it is me reading two chapters of the Bible, and wrapping things up. That's what this consists of. I am almost positive, knowing me, I, I could do something about it, but I'm almost positive this will be less than 30 minutes. But this is very, very important, because today I'm finally actually talking about the place. I'm not talking about the resurrection. I'm not talking about the judgment. I'm not talking about the time. Well, I am going to briefly wrap everything up at the end, kind of like a summary of everything. And I've talked about, I talked about like what the, the three heavens and the physical heaven was last time, what I thought maybe the, all three of the heavens were, two possible theories. You can see heaven part four if you're interested in that. Today, I'm actually going to talk about the third heaven, paradise, the eternal home of the believer in God. We're going to actually cover it. And a lot of the stuff you hear about Christians talking about heaven is contained within these two chapters. Uh, most everything else we've heard about heaven is just, you know that basically believers in God will go to, they will be um, like an everlasting light. Their glory will shine forth as the stars forever. Um, you've heard that they will in their flesh see. Well, Job said, I in my flesh will see God. So I guess that, do, that doesn't necessarily cover everyone, but in the New Testament we looked at how the resurrection actually does cover everybody. That Daniel's resurrection of... Um, of righteousness and the resurrection of unrighteousness that is universal they apply to everyone as the new testament lays out the coming of jesus and how his kingdom works i'm going to talk about i didn't cover that in detail so that'll be a little bit more detailed today but let's get into heaven itself let's talk about what heaven is because the ruling and reigning of jesus a lot of people think of that as heaven and there again, timing is a great question when it comes to eternity and the end of all things. So let's see what the Bible has to say about heaven. Revelation chapter 21 and chapter 22. And I'm going to read them in their entirety because I've got 30 minutes. And because they, it, pretty much all of the details past what I've just mentioned, all of the other details about what heaven is, we know it's eternal. That's mentioned in other parts of uh, the Bible. We know that Jesus is our judge. And we know that God reigns, believers go to heaven, and only believers. But we don't know any details of heaven past those details. The God of it, the length of it, and who's going to it. And I, really those are the most important things. So you can assume just based on those things it's going to be good. Well now let's go into some details about how good. I'm going to start in verse 1 of Revelation chapter 21. Now I saw, this is John, the author of Revelation, talking, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. 
for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. We'll talk about the timing in a minute, or in a few minutes, actually. I'm going to keep on reading. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, and don't, That's earlier on in Revelation. Don't get too hung up on that detail. If you're interested, by all means, um, read back in Revelation somewhere between chapter 16 and 18 if you want to know about that. And talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a great and, holy, a great and high mountain. And showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with twelve gates and twelve angels at the gates, and names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured its wall, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel. The construction of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, and on either side of the river, was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp, nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant, and of your brethren the prophets, 
and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now, I'm well aware that a lot of you guys don't read a, a chapter of the Bible a day, much less two in one sitting. So, and I was not trying to fill time there. Again, I this may be, very well be the one sermon that doesn't go to 30 minutes. Maybe not because I tend to ramble, but possibly. The bulk of what needed to be said was in those two chapters, and that was Revelation chapters 20 and 22 in their entirety. So guys, for those of you who have watched this video from beginning to this point, you just got two straight chapters of the Word of God. Wasn't so bad, was it? It was. Please stick around. Please give me a little bit more time. Please don't leave just yet. <laughs> Let me go into a little bit of explanation. A lot of things you hear about heaven are in these chapters right here. The fact that, well, I was like, etern the, the mention of Jesus and the mention of God and the mention of believers and the mention of how long eternity will be, like I said prior to reading these chapters, all those things are mentioned prior to these two chapters. But these two chapters mention all of those facts. The Lord God, the Lamb, they, they shall reign forever and ever. Um, and as regards to the believers being in there, you know, out those who are saved will walk in it. And nothing will enter it that defiles or causes an abomination. Only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So everything that has been mentioned before this is wrapped up in this nice little bow in chapters 21 and 22. And now as far as the timing goes, a lot of people will, there's a lot of, a lot to be explained within these chapters and I don't intend on doing a full expository sermon on every verse here. I certainly couldn't do that in one final lesson. But the parts about this being forever, Jesus and God being there, the part that you've heard about heaven being a place where there's no death, no tears, that was covered in chapter 21, verse 4. You've heard about the streets being made of gold. That is in chapter 21, verse 21. You've heard about the pearly gates. That is also in chapter 21, verse 21. If you've heard about, if you've heard about like, so there's actually a denomination in the church called the Four Square Church, and maybe you've, some people have heard the term Four Square. That is also mentioned in chapter 21, verse 16. The city is laid out as a square. Everything is equal. So everything is just wrapped up in this nice little bow. So the question becomes, all the stuff we read back in chapter 20, and you know, there's a first heaven and a first earth having passed away. What is the timing of all this stuff? It sounds like some people, and some people would say this is exactly what it says, that Jesus came to earth, reigned for a thousand years. Uh, the Greek word there is not actually 1,000 to the best of my knowledge. It's actually an indefinite but very extended, very long period of time. I don't think it's just specifically 1,000 on the money. I don't think the Greek word there is a literal 1,000, just a very long time. And of course, Satan comes out, tempts people, and then death and Hades are cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. So it seems like there's something past 
the the current hell, the current heaven, and the current earth. It sounds like it's some. It sounds like Jesus is going to reign, and it's going to happen before all of this. That's very possible. I won't say it's definite for one very big reason. If you look in chapter twenty one, in verse two, it reads um, that. The holy city in New Jerusalem is coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And then also into, and then go to verse 9. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last place came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Verse 10, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and he showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Revelation is incredibly symbolic throughout. Anyone who says otherwise has not read the book. If anyone wishes to interpret the book of Revelation literally, feel free to do so. Um, a lot of dispensational premillennialists do thus just that. They have a very elaborate timeline set up, and a lot of people subscribe to that belief. I personally do not. And he says right there, that the Holy Jerusalem is the Lamb's wife. So it's sim this sounds like the church personified. It may not be a literal city. It's very possible. Again, we're in a book of imagery. We're in a book of symbolism. Chapters 21 and 22 are not exempt from that. The first heaven and first earth that are passing away may simply be in reference to the fact that may simply be in reference to the fact that the, the, everything that is made new is actually us. And maybe those will maybe this new heaven and new earth. It's not that the first heaven and first earth, first heaven and first earth are completely gone. Maybe when it says the first heaven and first earth had passed away, maybe it's not referencing like a complete obliteration. Maybe it's just referencing that in, that the new are going to overtake and overrun it because it's so much better and so much more powerful than the original. And again, in reference to the resurrection. I'm not 100% sure how all of this works to out. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm not sure if I used this term in a previous video, but I am a pan-millennialist, and that basically means it will all pan out in the end. The previous terms that I used, dispensational premillennialism, classical premillennialism, amillennialism, postmillennialism, and preterism, all of those terms and again, if you're interested, you can watch this entire series. I won't belabor those points. Wow, time does fly when you're having fun. I won't belabor those points here, but all of them have a shred of truth. I believe a little bit of each of them, and I certainly do believe that in the end, in the grand scheme of things, uh, the believers win. Jesus wins. God wins. His will is done, and those who believe in him shall reign forever and ever. Chapter 22, verse 5. The no tears, the no crying, the no more death. You know, whether it's a literal city or whether it's us or whether it's just the people, however that's to be interpreted, you know, regardless of where exactly we're dwelling and how exactly this works, whether all the numbers and the descriptions of a uh, gold city and its foundations and pearly gates, whether those are literal or not, we know that we as believers, whether we are the city or whether we're dwelling in the city, that we will not experience any more death, sorrow, crying, tears, and no more pain because the former things are passed away. We will reign with God. He will be our light and our life, and we will reign with him forever and ever. The tree of life, we have access to it now. Chapter 22, verse 2. The tree of life, which was lost in the Garden of Eden, is restored at this point in time, even if that is symbolic. The eternal life that is talked about in Genesis chapter 3, and the eternal life that is talked about in chapters 21 and 22 of Revelation, that eternal life is, is given to us believers. We have it at that point. It's not a dream, it's not a wish, and it's not faith-based anymore, because at that point, we will be living in it with our glorified bodies that um, 1 Corinthians 15 talked about. After the judgment, which all, so many verses talked about, oh my gosh, and I'm like, what, what were some of those verses about judgment in John, in, in um in Ecclesiastes, in Proverbs, in Psalms, all the all of those mentionings of judgment. All after all the resurrection stuff is passed, after the after whatever this thousand year reign is, and Satan coming back up and getting crushed again, 
after the resurrection, after the second coming of Christ, after everything that all those different camps believe, we have this. The purpose of heaven, it's, I, I, didn't, I wasn't trying to make this ambiguous or unclear. I'm, act, I'm trying to make this as explainable, as understandable as possible. I'm also trying to be true to the text, true to the interpretation. I don't want to put words in the mouth of, of the prophet and the, and the words of God, from the word of God, I don't want to put any words there that shouldn't be there. We just read about the warning of those who would do such a thing. It's not good. And I do my very best to not lie to you guys, not, not deceive you guys, and to give you all sides of the argument to the best of my current understanding and belief. So while heaven, while the exact picture isn't maybe as crystal clear as a lot of Christians make it out to be, and I would say it's because some of the minority, the minority have studied this, read this, and come to a definite interpretation, whereas I have an idea of the various sides and I just can't really fully agree with one camp. The vast majority of Christians just heard it from their preacher, heard it from their mommy or daddy, heard it from tradition, and are like, yeah, this is what heaven is like. They haven't read it. They don't know. Or if they did read it, they skimmed over it. They just read it to read it. They didn't think about it, meditate on it, and dwell on it. It's unfortunate that the vast majority of Christians do that with the Word of God, because when heaven comes around, things may not be exactly what they thought it would be, and the things that they thought were okay may not exactly be okay, because they didn't read the Word of God, and they didn't know the Word of God. So I want to give you guys as much truth about heaven as I could throughout this series, and sure enough, this thing went long. Will I wrap it up under 30 minutes? We'll find out. There's only one way to conclude a message on heaven. And that is, I want you to be there with me. Jesus wants you to be there. God wants you to be there. He created you for heaven. That's your home. That's your destiny in the middle of all the questions. We know that there's a resurrection. We know there's a judgment. And we know that there is a heaven. There's a dwelling place for us. Whatever the exact dimensions may be, there is an eternal dwelling place for us in God. This life is not the end. It's the, only the beginning. Literally, only the beginning. And God wants you in heaven with him. Sin separates us from God, and we're born sinners. There's no way that we can get ourselves out of that mess. We can't do good enough. We can't earn enough. I talked about that in the message on judgment. Uh, I think that was heaven part three. I'm fairly confident that was where I talked about judgment a lot. Read the descriptions. I'll leave a little bit of tidbits about what the message is about in the descriptions of the videos. But that's why Jesus came. He died on the cross, shedding his blood for your sins, and he rose again three days later to guarantee you this heaven, to guarantee you this paradise, this eternal life that he wanted us to be in from the beginning. The tree of life was there with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve ate from the wrong darn tree. The tree of life was right there. There was no prohibition to eat from it. They could have eaten from it, and they didn't. They sinned. They chose in a way God didn't want them to choose. But right now, God's saying, hey, it's not over yet. I made a way. There's another chance. Yeah, you get, you get, you're getting that, that coin in the arcade machine, son, daughter. You're getting that extra credit. You're getting a chance to continue. It's not game over yet. Guys, hit the start button. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm a huge geek. I'm Jesus freaking gamer after all. You're going to talk in geek terms, doggone it. Continue. Don't give up. Don't game over. Don't just be like, yeah, whatever. Accept Jesus. All of heaven is right there at your fingertips. All you've got to do is say, yes, I want that. God, I'm sorry. I've messed up. Please forgive me. That's all you need to do. And if you want specific words to say those things in, I'm going to shoot up a prayer. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I've messed up. I believe you died on the cross, shedding your blood, so my sins can be forgiven. And right now I ask you to forgive me and to be my God and my Savior. And I believe you rose again, from th rose again three days later, guaranteeing me heaven with you forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
If you prayed that prayer and you meant it from the bottom of your heart, then guess what? You are a believer. You are a child of God. You are going to heaven. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're my brother or my sister. Welcome to the family. It is good to have you. It is good to have you. I have loved you all this time throughout all my videos, as I always end my videos with, I love you and God bless. I loved you all this time. God's loved you all this time, but it is good to have you as a part of the family now. That is awesome. If I can encourage you, please read your Bible just a little bit every day. You want to get to know what your God thinks about stuff, how he feels about stuff, what's on his mind and in his heart. Read the Bible. That's what it's there for. It's like a love letter from heaven for you. Shoot up a prayer, just a little prayer every day from God. Even if it's as simple as, you know, God, this day sucks. Or, God, thank you, this day's pretty good. Or if you want to do something longer, feel free. But shoot just a little bit of prayer every day, even the little ones. God hears, God answers, and they count. God cares about even the little ones. Even the help me or uh, thank you. God cares about each and every one of those. Finally, find a church, a group of people who believe that Jesus is God, that Jesus is it died on the cross for your sins and rose again from the dead three days later, that the Bible is the Word of God. Find a group of people who believe the same things as you because it's so encouraging to be around like-minded people. It'll keep you on track. It'll keep you in the faith. And guys, I actually wrapped up in less than 30 minutes. Not by much. It's still over 26, but it was under 30. How about that? It'll never happen again. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. It might happen again. I just seriously doubt it. I love you. And that's whether you accepted Christ or not. I still love you, and so does God. We're just kept, we're waiting for you. We're hopefully waiting for you. We love you, and God bless.